Shout out to the whole Miami, the whole Dade County. You know what I mean? All the hoods, you know. That's what's up. That's up what's up. A lot of Haitian. Shout out to Teeth Play, Free Zone. You know what I'm saying? You know. Fifteen Avenue days, man. The tree. Yeah. Well, it used to be the tree. Yeah. Oh, the tree. Thirty. Yeah. Over there in the sub. Yeah. <laughs> All that, man. I'm Miami originator, man. Yeah. I've been, I've been down here thirty years, man. So. Yeah. Basically, man. Young generation, just you feel me? They taking over. It ain't about. It ain't about. You know what I'm saying? The older generation now. It's, it's about the younger generation. You got to make way for them, man. That's how. That's how I was when I was a young nigga. No, when I was coming up, an older nigga couldn't tell me nothing, so that's why I just make way for them young niggas, because these young niggas stupid, wow. Yeah, but then they had respect, though. Like, you had, you had respect. Yeah, back in the days, you gonna, you gonna, yeah. you had you had to give respect, because niggas, the, the niggas on the corner to uh, uh, get that app at you. If you ain't, even if you ain't want to respect the game, you gonna, you gonna get, you gonna, it's some type of, you gonna have to respect the game at, at some point. Oh man, there ain't no successes, man. Like I heard this remedy, man. You either slain crack rock or it got a wicked jump shot. <laughs> you feel me? And that's 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 what hey, and that's what come out of the hood. That's the only thing gonna get you up out of the hood. You either got a wicked jump shot or you gonna be slaying crack rock. Alright, so that's the only thing gonna get you up out of the hood unless you cut I sell hair cuts, man. I don't sell no weed, no dope. This is what I do, I sell hair cuts. You feel me? What it is, Dade County, it's your boy J Boogie J Baby, Lloyd T. Y'all already know. Way. If you walk the streets, the police don't fuck with you. Oh yeah, you man, they just were about to fuck with me today. Shit, I had to what? jump out the car on them. Because I ain't got no license, I had to hurry up and park that motherfucker. <laughs> I had to hurry up and jump out. <laughs> yeah, man, they going to, they, they antagonize people every day, man. They going to antagonize you all of that. Yeah. It was supposed to be getting better, but it ain't, ain't, getting, ain't, getting, ain't, getting, ain't getting better. There's too many of them on the street now, man. Too many of them. There's too many crackers on the street now, man. But, you know, most police, man. You know what I mean. You gotta let them know, crackers is mainly bad police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got some good police out there. You feel me? You be down there in a minute. You can't kill one. Yeah, man, yeah. see, these, these Dade County dreads. I don't know how y'all niggas grow them shit up, up the road, but this is how we do it down here. <laughs> Dade County, Liberty City, man. Be called Dookie. Can't, oh, even, okay. can't even walk down the street. They gonna jump out on you, run your name, flip your pocket, do everything to you, man. These streets crazy right? down here, man. Niggas ain't gonna... got no justice. You already know that. When the nigga had justice, niggas ain't got no justice. And then you try to get some justice, though, you going in them handcuffs. <laughs> know about that? They gonna put them, they gonna slap, yeah, slap them handcuffs on you. What? What? Talk back to them, what? Talk back to them. They, might, they, they might gonna slam you on your neck your and shit. Your and they the gonna take you your ass to the county ID. just like that. They ain't taking you to that nasty yeah, county, go man. There. You don't wanna go there. Roaches and rats. You don't wanna beat up with them. Yeah, but so, man, this, hey, basically, man, what we saying is, man, this, this, this the dirty south. This is Miami. Y'all already know where y'all at. Y'all in the heart of the city. Cocaine Cowboys. You feel me? This is where, this where, this where the heart beat. This Port where the heart Miami. beat from. Liberty to, City, man. Shout out to Rick Ross, man. That boy doing his thing. MMG, man. Yeah, Much Ross holding it down. Trick Daddy, all y'all boys, man. Real niggas do real thing. That's it, man. Matter of fact, it's a black police officer in this area. I don't know what it is. He just don't like black people. I believe he don't like black people. And I've been pulled over by this same police officers more than five times. I count more than on, on one hand how many times this same police officer. Cause I think, you know, certain police officers in certain neighborhoods target certain faces that they see often, yeah. Yeah. you know? 
Like, I got a friend of mine who I'm not gonna mention who's a part of this area. Every time he come over here, they they messing with him for trespassing. When he got friends and relatives that live in this area, so you basically telling me I can't go see the people that I associate with. That's basically what you telling me. Why? Because you got a personal vendetta with me as a person, you know? Because I'm I'm this way or I'm this color. But you supposed to be you supposed to be a man of the people you here to protect and serve, but you worried about me when there's people out here killing people, raping people, robbing people. Way worse the stuff than what I'm doing. I'm 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 smoking a joint. What you bothering me for? I'm minding my business. There's people out here doing rape, raping and killing that y'all still can't find, but yeah, you can still, you can manage to find me in the middle of a park smoking a joint. If me and a white person commit the same crime, we got the same amount of offenses, we the same age, why should he get less time than I'm going to get? Because I bet you, I bet you all the money in my pocket right now, I get more time for a bag of weed than a cracker would. This is what a cracker is. A cracker was what we generally describe all these individuals as. It, it's really just a bad cop. And a cracker could be a white person, a black person, Hispanic cop, Asian cop. Long as he got on that badge and he a cricket, he a cracker. <laughs> basically, you feel me? That's that's basically what that is. It's not that's that. No, when we say cracker, it don't it don't really mean your skin color, cause you could be black and still be a cracker. You a, but basically you a black and you a cracker. What we call that? What they call that back in the day? That was an Uncle Tom. You was an Uncle Tom back in the day. History form. History form. Yeah. Look it up. That's what the uh, Uncle Tom's cabin, the, the black dude who was hopping around the little slave room and he hit ha ha and with the crackers was friendly, they call that an Uncle Tom. I bet you don't know that majority of people that's out here, black people that's out here, they bet they tell you that it's more black people in jail than it is in college. And if you believe that, you're a fool. Because there's more pe black people in college than it is in jail. But this video camera, that TV screen that you always looking at, that media, that magazine, that's what they tell you. They tell you that it's more of us. They tell you it's more of us. You look at what I'm pointing at. They tell you it's more of us in jail than it's in college. So you'll think that you can never get there. Yeah. But if you get there, you get here and you realize, wait a minute, these crackers been lying this all the time. And there's certain individuals who don't have the means to attain them, so they resort to illeg illegitimate means to get those. Exactly. And that that's the that's the fail, that's the setup. Uh -huh. Huh, try to come get this. We're not gonna provide you with the means to get this, so you're gonna resort to this to get this. Now we done caught you. Now come sit in our jails and make and let us make thirty-seven thousand dollars off each of y'all. Uh. Thirty-seven dollars, thirty-seven thousand dollars they make off of each person in jail. But yeah, they they probably think you know that, huh? They probably think you know that. And that's your taxpaying money. You pay for them to sit in jail. Your, your, your cousin, Uncle Elroy, and you pay for them to sit in jail because they're coming out of your check. You pay taxes when you go to McDonald's. You pay taxes when you go to Family Dollar, when you go to Walmart to pick up all them groceries. You pay. What? Those 7% coming right out of your pocket and going right to them taxpayers' dollars. It's your taxpaying money that goes right to the prisons. I'm going to tell you something else you don't know. Guess how, guess how Florida jailhouses are built, based on the, 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 the third grade, the FCAT, third grade passing rate. If your child does not pass, if a certain amount of children don't pass the FCAT in the third grade, that's how many pills, um, prisons they decide they're going to build in the future. Based, based off that alone. Based off of that alone. And it's politicians, secretaries, people in higher power who you would figure was intelligent, how the makers of the test can't pass the test. That's like me making a gun that I can't fire. <laughs> I need somebody else to fire it for me. I'm Smith and Wesson, I make a gun that only <laughs> da, 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 could, could fire. <laughs> somebody I know personally, you know, we ain't end on good terms, but I don't wish death for nobody. Somebody I know personally, you know, passed away in this neighborhood. I got homeboys who I'm lucky that I know have been shot, and I'm lucky that they're still here. I got, I got homeboys get hit, AK-47, through, through his ankle, out of his other ankle, through his thigh, out of the other side of his thigh, and through his chest. He's still here. I got homeboys who been hit four, five, six times. He can't even, he done got hit so many times, he couldn't even tell me how many times he got hit. Wait a minute, bro, you gotta wait till they take all the bullets out. Damn, you got that many bullets in him? I gotta wait till you go through surgery for you to tell me how many holes in your body? 
27th Avenue by the Walgreens. It's pretty rough up here in, in Liberty City. They drive Robert, Robert Lady, Parker Buck. It's pretty rough out here. I'm in the wheelchair, they tried me, but not a night. But I had my gun on me. It need to be a change, you know, it's rough. And I was getting ready to take him out, too. I made a nigga do a hundred yard dash. I shot him out of his head. Yeah. I've been here since October going to make five years. I live in 2988. But it's dropped on you, man. To, the drug got his stuff. The drug got his Yeah. What else you feel like got his stuff? Huh? What else you feel like got his stuff? Obama got to get people some work. In the young generation, they get them educated. Now, they're selling drugs. Black America need to pull together. They don't do that. The average young man, he ain't got no education. So he sells drugs to pay his bills. I'm 60 years old, man. Came on Miami Jackson, 68. Back in the day, we just fight out big then. But now they're killing you. Police looking for them right now, I'm so, I swear to God on that. See that station up there? It is just dangerous. But see, I didn't get a job. They even can't get a job The McDonald. You can't pull the application up. If you can't spell your own name, you're in trouble. Right or wrong. Hey, you know what y'all should do, man? I'm going down there now. Go by the station up there. The man don't kill, go down the station. I'm coming down there in a minute. I, I remember Scott, but Scott, whoop! Scott, Scott had a party almost every weekend. You know what I'm saying? I think. Back in the day, like like 90, like 92, 95, it was good. Like, I mean, it, it probably wasn't that bad as it was. Now, now it's, it's, it's woo. But then, oh, this is not This is not fun. Just sit there, just, that's it, man. Just, it's all you do, it just, Watch the kids, or watch people have fun, get a little barbecue right there, have a little gate, things to go in. And if I still remember, you go in, you go right here, there used to be a steps. Cause the Scotch was upstairs and downstairs. But then how my auntie was in the living room right here, the kitchen right there, then you go back there, it's a uh with some other room, but in this case it's probably going back this way. You feel me? Then it was like Two bedrooms on top. I think, like, if I'm not mistaken, probably one that had a bathroom. I know it was a bathroom upstairs. I know that. Kids used to be like in the back, though, used to be in the back. So, yeah. Clean. I'm out here on uh, 32nd Avenue, Northwest 79th Street. Uh, I sell waters and Gatorades and drinks to uh, support my, my means of living. Um, I'm unemployed right now, but I've been unemployed for a while. I, um, I went out looking for work, looking for jobs, but it's been very hard, especially in this community right now. And, uh, a lot of times, uh, not being bilingual has is, is, is been hurting me too. But it's been hard to look for work. So I've been in Liberty City all my life, and um, I grew up in the area of 46th Street and 20, 27th Avenue. I, yes, I have a high school diploma. Yes. Yeah, I, oh yes, I graduated from Miami Jackson Senior High School. Yes, 1981. When I got out of high school, I went to Miami Dade Community College for some time. I didn't, I didn't stay, I didn't finish a degree or anything, but after a little while, because I couldn't find any work, I joined the Air Force. I was also in the military too. So even with the military also, and I'm looking for work, it's still been hard to find. All this credit you still can't. And I still can't even find work. I came here to sell water because the work was slow. The I, labor pool dried out. Right, the labor pool is dried out. And so many of the guys that I knew and used to work with at the labor pool, labor ready, they told me that work is slow. I see a lot of guys walking. I said, what happened? They said, well, it's no work. I said, well, this is why I started selling waters. So this is what I'm doing. I come out here. This is something that I do to try to support whatever means I can to make it financially. So it's not just me, I know it's a lot of people, a lot of people are out of work. Any, anything I can do to, uh, to, make, to make money, to make cash. So the job market has is, is been so slow, so now you have to depend on whatever you can do. So what little skills I have, I did a little construction work and carpentry and stuff like that. 
So whenever I find little people that may need a little help, a little cyber, I like to do lawn service business, but I don't have the equipment that I need to, to do that work also. Now, you have so many people out of work and unemployed. So this is why I'm not just the only one now. That's why I have people up the street, people down the street. As a matter of fact, it's that guy, see this guy here across the street? Um, the, the, the short man right there? He just came out here about maybe a couple of months ago. And uh, yeah, yeah. So he came out here and um, he actually came over to where I'm working here. And he's on the same same yeah. place working for uh, and, and I said, hey, you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta get your home spot over there. So that's how tough it is out here. And you got guys down the street that's selling water. So it's not like I'm the only one, like a monopoly. Yeah. So I gotta, then you have a, another guy that's, He's, he's usually on this side, so you have competition all, all around. Now I'm gonna have to come up with some more products because right down the street, it's a woman, see, she sells roses, she, got, uh, she sells uh, tangerines, she sells uh, pineapples and all this different type of thing. So she, you know, a lot of people go to her, but see, the thing is, see, I don't have a vehicle. I don't have a transportation. She has a van, so she she got a little advantage as far as getting more pr exactly. products. What all you got? That's well, I only I, the only thing I have is a cooler. That's it. And I use that, and I push that in a buggy. Sometimes I go over to my mother's house. It's been times that I've just had to be on the street. This has times that I've had to go out here and just hey, I didn't have anywhere to sleep, anywhere to be at, so I've had to sleep out here on the street. That's that's not good. It's no fun. You know, I tried the homeless shelters also, but guess what? Now, they give you a, 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 when I tried going there, I had to do through a lot of paperwork and a lot of red tape. So they were telling me that at a, at a, homeless, at a homeless shelter, shelter. right. So they didn't accept me. So I went to the homeless shelter. So they were telling me, well, you didn't fit, you didn't, I guess I, you didn't fit the, the criteria. I was, but I'm like, I'm home with what I got to do. My name is Reverend Garland Dwayne Davis. And I've been in Florida for about six years. I got fired last June. Uh, I was up for manager. All I had to do was talk people to talk people into going back to college, and uh, I got a little complacent, and they fired me. And uh, I've been homeless since then. Um, I got in a little trouble earlier this year. In fact, I shot somebody on Christmas Day, and I beat somebody into a coma in March. And um, the churches I work for fired me. I used to have a house to myself up here on, uh, what was it, 1401 Northwest 59th, and they paid me $400 to move out when they foreclosed on the house, so. Let me see here, what's something positive I can say about this place? Um, lots of stuff for a preacher to do. There's lots of funerals to attend to. There's lots of people that I can bless. Um, in fact, I'd like to bless all of you in the way uh, that Moses uh, taught Aaron. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his kindness upon you and give you our peace. Because we continuously being harassed. And I don't like that. Something got to be done about that. The, the police just left just harassing us over there. Just while ago, all of us. All we of had to come us. on this side. We were standing over there at the service station. Right. He just just harassing us and be a man in our own family. And they just come over there harassing us. Just while ago. Which they need to be out there going like in a bad neighborhood. Exactly. Like it's the same way in the Poker Mean Project. Poker Mean Project is somewhere same. like that. Same, the same, exact same way. It's a pity every right. day. It's we not might right. be laying down here, it's laying, film right. over here. Film over here where we sleep at. This is our area. Yeah. Look. Put your camera over here and let me show you something here. This is our, this is our home lifestyle right here. Right here, this is our home lifestyle. This is where we live at. This is, this, we don't have no air clothes or nothing hey, like that right there. Hey, girl. You feel me? This is my bunk here. This is my bunk. This is my bunk. Hey, I'm a veteran. Even and, though we're down, but we, all of us stick together, though. Together. And, you feel and, me? You, and you can see, look around, look over here. What you eat? God blessed us with a, with a good barbecue grill, so we barbecue uh, uh -huh. three or four times a week, so it's not so bad. We eat pretty good out yeah, here. Yeah, I'm we a good gonna eat, we going to eat lovely. That's, that's on the end of reason for doubt. We're going to go home because the Lord going to bless us. By the way, this here, this here my brother right here. I want you to back up enough film both of us together. This is me and my brother right here. 
You feel me? Yeah. Both of us out here each and every yeah. day. You want to talk to him? I was born and raised in Barbados, but I came over here in, 19, in August the 14th, 1986. And I lived in O'Block, I lived over here, but I lived mostly <laughs> in Liberty City. And that's where I stay. But I got injured and I lost my job and I lost my place. So I'm out here now. So I'm living out here now. But still, you got people that, that, that support you. Even though you're down now, you still got people support you. Yeah. I got a lot of support, people, because they don't, they don't let me down. It, yeah. If I go to them and they need help, there we go. Yeah. No lack. So I can could, I could fall back on my people. You can always fall back on your people. And they help me out. Yeah. Sure. I've been locked up on life. You've been locked up two times on life alone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, the police? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like, they say one time I, they say I was serving, you know, all three dopes. In a wheelchair? Crack. Crack. No, I went in a wheelchair. I went injured there. Okay. I was walking. I just got off the bus and I was going to sort of get me some beer to watch the game. And they stopped me and told me I was serving weed right hard. And, yeah, was, and they been, I spent show. four months He's in jail. But the thing about it is that. When they, when they, my public pretender keep putting it off, putting it off, I said to the judge, they want to speak to you directly. They were like, they ain't had nothing Yeah, they ain't had nothing. And the judge said, you know what, Mr. Humphrey, in the morning, you will be out of here. Yeah, I came down here in 1955. Okay, you came it, down it, here from where? From Georgia. Okay. I came from Andersonville, Georgia. My Andersonville. Home in Okay, did you? Georgia, Georgia. That's not too from a, not too far from America, Georgia. Right, I'm familiar right. with it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I got family in Buena Vista. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Buena Vista. I know where Buena Vista. Is. <laughs> we, we, my cousin used to drive truck and haul full out over there. So when you came down here in '55, what was it like to you? Man, it was nice. Everything was nice here. Yeah. It was real nice in '55, man. You, you when I came here, you didn't even not have to lock your door. You, you you leave your home and leave your house on the locker with no problem. Right. But thing went to change around the 60s, man. Thing went to getting the 60s? rough. 60s? Around the 60s. That's when it started getting kind of rough. And what you think contributed to that? I don't know. Couldn't tell me. <laughs> Couldn't tell me. I don't know. I know things changed. Because one time, man, I know when I came out, you didn't even have to lock your door. Mm -hmm. You could just roll around here. And this time of day, would be so many people in here. This time of day, you couldn't even walk. So since 55, how you been surviving, Mr. Baldwin? Well, I, I've been surviving good, man. Yeah. God been good to me. That's what's up. Seems yeah. like you're still in good yeah. health. Yeah, God been good to me. That's what's up. Yeah, what, what you I, been I doing? On, that? I worked on a job for 40 years for Pepsi Cola. For Pepsi Cola? Were you driving? I drive probably. Whoa. I retired okay. over there. Wow. Yeah, I started when they were, you know where the uh, social security office at down 36? Right. That used to be Pepsi Cola right there. All right. Is that, that right? That was the Pepsi Cola plant. That way I started working at right there. When did it um, go down? Well, after we, we moved on to Palmetto. Uh huh. We moved on to Palmetto, I think it was 60. Uh, we moved out there in 65, I believe it was 60. Mm -hmm. I believe we moved in 65. It's been so long, I remember that. I retired in, I retired in 1996. Mm -hmm. that's, when, that's when I left. And how so, did but, that go for you? Because my grandmother, when she was trying to get her retirement, she had some problems. Yeah, well, I didn't have no problem because I, I was a union. I was union. I was, I, our was union was strong. So they uh, they set up, Pepsi Coda set up a plan for us the last that we die, man. I get mine till I die. Right. And right. I, uh, but I put some of mine in a trust fund, uh -huh. trust, like a trust fund for my wife. But, you know, right. I had five kids. So basically, yeah. your life is here. Yeah. yeah, well, I lost my two sons. I just got three I'm sorry dogs. to hear that. Yeah, I had one son. He was a lawyer. He was up there in Chicago. How long ago was this? Well, he been, he, been, he been dead now about two months. Two months? Yeah, he had a major, master heart attack. Uh. He, was getting, he was just beginning to get into big money, man. Uh -huh. He had some strong cases going. Mm. He was just, just, get, just getting started. I'm sorry to hear that, mister. Yeah, the, the lady we were working with him said, said, 
If he'd have been living, man, it'd say he, he'd have been up in the money. Right. He had, he had some, another girl awakened with him. She was a law, gone for a lawyer, too. Yeah, we extend our condolences for that. Yeah, huh? man. I, boy, man, I, it broke my heart when he passed. Oh, he planned on doing a lot of things for me. Mm. Yeah, he had, he was dead. I'm going to buy you a brand new truck. And I don't want you to put nothing on it. I said, you buy them, I'm going to load it down. <laughs> I said, because it's a truck. I said, you know, if, if I got a truck, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some on. They tired of not to put nothing on them. <laughs> yeah, when I first bought it, he didn't put that on that pretty truck. I said, I don't care how pretty it is, I bought it for a truck, and I'm going to use it for a truck. After, wow. I, after I stopped buying the car, uh -huh. I started buying a truck. But if I said, if I'm going to keep it pretty, I'm going to buy a car. So if I'm going to buy a truck, I buy it to work with. All right. Yeah. Now, what's Dang. the story behind this scar right here? What? Oh, that's, that's what it is. That's yeah. a nasty scar. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. What's the story See, behind that? that? that, that I, I had to go on kidney machine. Oh, yeah? And the, uh, Dr. Jones done this. Uh-huh. He, he messed this up. He, so that's actually an accident? Well, just the way he done it. Uh -huh. I don't know. He, he didn't know what the hell he was done. <laughs> I put it like that. Oh, and how old is that scar? Uh, it's about four years old. Oh, okay. Yeah, but he didn't have to fix it like that. So, uh, actually, uh, so you, what you was going on there in, in the operation? Yeah, uh, she, she had to. I had to go on the, on the kidney machine. They got she, they got one here. Uh huh. Doctor Harris put this one in. Doctor Harris put this one in. Doctor Jones put that one. But this one, I don't have no problem with it. <laughs> but Doctor Jones, I don't know he. He, 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 you see how he left it? Yeah. Yeah. It's just how he left it, man. Mm. Wow. Well, yeah, uh, Mr. Well, thank Ball, God, thank God I'm still done. Yeah, right. most definitely, most definitely. So, uh, we're going to see from a goon standpoint, you know what I'm saying, how it's moving and shaking out here in Brown's up, and see how he feel about the community as well, because just because a nigga a goon, that don't mean a nigga ain't got thoughts. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing people need to understand out there. Just because we out here living a certain way, don't mean like, you know what I'm saying? We bleed, man. You know what I'm saying? If a family member die, we cry. We hurt too. You know what I'm saying? We we thinkers. You know what I'm saying? We want to be successful. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to take it right here to this end right here. What's going on, bro? Chill, chill. First of all, thank you for participating, my nigga. And it's on you, my nigga. How, 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 how you feel about the hood? I mean, you know, shit, it's the same. You feel me? You gotta survive out here, you know. You got shooting every day, you got drugs, you got the kids, you know, nigga got kids too, so it's survival out here, really. So you, you got feel me? Yeah, nigga I got mean, short. Got... I got two shorties, girl yeah. and boy. And yeah. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, man. Five is gonna be three. Okay. It's hard, man. I gotta do whatever I gotta do though. Right. I can't get them no broken promises right. though, you feel me? I gotta do whatever it is. Right. When I had them now of my choice, you feel Most me? So definitely. whatever I gotta do to get it, I gotta do it. So right yeah. now in the day's time, you saying that you a father that's stepping up to the plate. Damn right. All right, now now let, let's get a, a good shot of this man. You understand me? Cause so many times women will stereotype us by the yeah, way we, we look. Yeah. Tattoos, dreads, and gold teeth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this man is a hard working man taking care of his shoulders. You understand what I'm saying? So um right now my brother like what's going on in your life, like how you getting by? Like you ain't gotta let go of any, you know, all kind of loose information. I, but I play the cards out of the street deal them, right, man. Right, that's, right, that's right. all I can say. You right, 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 right. Out of the street deal them. Every day I wake up, however, I got to get it. That's what Whatever that. kind of phone call I get, you feel me? Whatever, uh, I take paper, however, I got to get it. And some way or another, it come together yeah. for you. It come together. It come together. It come together. So. Sometimes be harder than other times, but right. you know. Right. It be, I be blessed. I'm, not, right. I'm out here right now. Right. I ain't locked up. I ain't dead. Got a lot of soldiers out of here right now. A lot of niggas locked up right now. Right. You feel me? I'm out here. I'm breathing. I can't complain. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I see you tack game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long you been on your, uh, you know what I'm saying, Four working minutes, on your sleeves? 2000, 2000, Three, four, 2003 or do, four. Do you, know. do you find it harder though to get? Cause I, I had to wit. I was wit dot. I was grit yeah. dot. Do you find it harder to get around? You know what I'm saying with the crackers all in your face. And yeah, that's the they, you know we stereotype. This right. it right here. This profile right, right. here. This is what they this gonna is, stereotype. This is, this is, they looking this is for this. Dade County <laughs> through and through. You see my brother. 
You know what I'm saying? And it, it, you know, this is just to add on. This is Dade County through and through. This is our finest right here. This is how we rock. Dreads, gold teeth, and tattoos, man. Yeah, we don't give a fuck. Yeah, Straight up and down. We give a fuck, but we don't give a fuck. Yeah, man. <laughs> so um, before we leave you, bro, like, is there anything that you would like to say to, you know, to, uh, just on to shed some light on the city? Any, any uh, uh, advice you can give the young man out there that got them kids that he just got running there, well, and ain't trying to take care of? Them? I think niggas should be out here taking care of them kids, especially them little girls. You feel me? Too many little girls, niggas know how that shit go out here, man. You gonna look for the weakest bitch out here that you can manipulate, you feel right. me? For them little girls, niggas need to be the biggest, the, the best daddy in the world for them little girls, you feel me? Most definitely. Them little mans, I feel like a man, he gonna be a man regardless, right? right. His daddy in his life or not. Right. So if you him. if you is gonna have thoughts on which one of them kids you gonna raise, the little girl most that important, girl. you feel me? You most gotta definitely. cuff her like this here, put yes, on your wing. So she ain't gotta look for love out there. Yes. Up. All the niggas that's out here, you feel me, running <laughs> crazy, you feel me? I think them young niggas need to slow down. You got a lot of young niggas, you feel me? Yeah. They watching the older niggas do their little thing, but yeah. they ain't got no guidance with it, you feel me? Right. Niggas they just do. grabbing them tools and niggas just going ham, you feel me? Yeah. Niggas better think. You don't know, man, you can't be out here like that. Right. Especially nigga bare face, nigga doing all kind right. of shit. Right. Nigga gonna see you, man. You know yeah. who this shit's too small. Real We're talk. too small. Everybody know everybody, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah.